subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people, so we've already seen the concept of Laplace transform for continuous time LTI systems and signals. We saw that transforming continuous time signals as well as systems in Laplace domain eased our task, eased our task of convolution etc. Right? So we, we uh, used to transform our continuous time signals and systems in Laplace transform, Laplace domain to ease our task of computing the output. Now we are going to introduce the concept of Z transform. See Z transform does the same task, same task for discrete time signals and system. The same thing that we used to do using Laplace transform for continuous time signals and system, we are going to do the same thing for discrete time LTI systems as well as signals using the Z transform. Okay, so the Z transform is actually just discrete time counterpart of Laplace transform. Okay, so uh, this Z is actually a complex variable and uh, as you saw that S, S was also a complex variable, S which was sigma plus j omega, this Z is also going to be a complex variable. See, we used to represent S as uh, in this form, in this coordinate form sigma plus j omega. In, uh, for representing Z, we are using polar form that is we are going to represent Z in terms of its magnitude and phase. Okay, so uh, we are going to see, uh, see as we, we looked at Laplace transform so that our complicated integral differential equations could transform into algebraic equations, right? In a similar manner, what is Z transform going to do? It is going to convert our difference equations into algebraic equations. So, therefore, analysis of discrete time systems is going to simplify using Z transform. So, uh, properties of Z transform are uh, closely going to resemble properties of Laplace transform. However, there are few important distinctions between the two. So, we are going to look at those separately. Otherwise, we are just going to learn this Z transform using the analogy of Laplace transform. We have already looked very carefully, very closely at properties of Laplace transform, how to calculate Laplace transform, how to calculate inverse Laplace transform, if Laplace transform some basic signals etc. So we are just going to learn Z transform using the analogy. Okay, so uh, we start with the definition of Z transform. So we saw that if eigenfunction of a discrete time system is taken as z to the power n, we learned that eigenfunction for a discrete time system is going to be z to the power n. Then output, output for the system is, if you are applying z to the power n, then output is going to be the same function except for a scalar multiplier. This z is a scalar multiplier. Right, we saw that what happens, what is an eigenfunction? Eigenfunction is that function. If it is given as input, output is the same function. Output obtained is the same function. So, now where, where we used to define hz, the scalar multipliers were defined as integration, sorry, summation of n from minus infinity to infinity, hn into z to the power minus n. This is actually the this is actually Z transform of H of N. This is how you define Z transform. Okay, this HZ is actually the Z transform of H of N. So for any general signal XN, X of Z, Z transform of X of N is given as summation of N minus infinity to infinity XN into Z minus N. Okay, this variable Z, this is a complex variable again similar to S. S we used to define in this coordinate rectangular coordinates. Z we are defining in polar coordinates. R is its magnitude and this sigma is the phase of Z. Okay. So this is expressed in polar form as Z is equal to R E J sigma. Also you must have learned when we were using S as complex variable, when we were representing it in uh, rectangular coordinates we were using this type of system okay sigma was uh, represented here omega here 
when you're using polar coordinate you're going to use this type of system okay magnitude is defined this way and angle is defined here okay this is how you're representing polar coordinates we're going to look at uh, roc and uh, values of z etc okay now see since the limits are from minus infinity to infinity this is also bilateral or two sided z transform okay as we discussed about unilateral laplace transform we have unilateral z transform also okay where limits would be from 0 to infinity so uh, similar to laplace we are going to discuss unilateral z transform in uh, one separate sections also same same note here we are going to see bilateral okay i am just going to write the definition of unilateral transform if you have to calculate unilateral z transform of a system it's going to be integration from 0 to infinity x in z to the power minus n and bilateral and unilateral z transform bilateral and unilateral z transforms are going to be equivalent if the signal itself is causal equivalent only if x n itself is 0 for n less than 0 ok so uh, generally when we are discussing z transform we are going to discuss this bilateral z transform only ok uh, we just going to look at unilateral z transform in a separate sections right so uh, similar to laplace x of z can be written as z this is the symbol we are using so this is z transform of x of n or or we can say that x of n and x of z form a z transform pair right now uh, one important concept that we introduce here also is region of convergence region of convergence is important to define because only where uh, this z transform is going to converge or converge means going to have finite value you can define z transform for a signal so range of values of the complex variable z for which z transform converges is called region of convergence okay so uh, to just understand this concept of z transform and associated roc we are considering an example suppose we have a signal x of n which is equal to a to the power n u n so this is actually a sequence this is just a increasing exponential sequence okay is some real number if i try to find out uh, z transform for this sequence it is going to be summation from minus infinity to infinity a to the power n u n z to the power minus n now since this is multiplication with u n limits are going to change from n is equal to 0 to infinity and this is going to be a z minus 1 to the power n right now if i want that x of z should converge converge means should have finite value then what do i need i need that this summation this summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity of mod a z power minus n should be less than infinity see uh, as you can see that this is actually a gp this is a infinite gp okay because power is going to increase by one every time so for a gp to be summable for gp to converge we say that its common ratio should be less than one okay so roc is going to be the range of values of z for which mod az minus one is less than one or equivalently i can say mod z should be greater than mod a if this is true then x of z is going to be x of z which is summation n is equal to 0 to infinity a z minus n this is going to be 1 upon 1 minus a z per minus 1 with the condition that mod z is greater than mod a this is going to be the roc right uh, also if you just try to simplify this you can write x z as z upon z minus a with roc as mod z greater than mod a okay now this is the roc of this system now already we have discussed that uh, when you try to uh, just draw this roc using a diagram we are representing z in polar form polar form means whenever you try to draw anything when you are try whenever you talk about mod of z it is going to be in the form of a circle 
right so if i just try to draw roc for this uh, for this particular signal mm -hmm. it is going to be roc for any signal for any this is going to be defined in circles so this is imaginary part of this this is real part of this we are taking reference for reference you are taking a unit circle unit circle means where mod of z is 1 so this is suppose a unit circle now we need that mod of z should be mod uh, greater than mod of a suppose a lies somewhere here here then i draw a circle with radius a okay then my roc is going to be outside this this is a suppose outside this okay and one case would be where a is greater than 1 then suppose this is the unit circle and this is uh, where your a lies this is suppose 1 then this is going to be your ROC. Now this unit circle has its significance as j omega axis ha had in a Laplace transform. Same significance this unit circle is going to have. Okay, For a system to be stable it must contain this unit circle. For a system to be causal poles must lie inside the unit circle and so on. Okay, We are going to look at it later. For now you can just see that we had ROC of the form mod z greater than mod a. So we located a on this axis on uh, this or uh, according to magnitude we drew a circle and then we need mod z to be greater than this then it is going to be lying outside the circle of mod z equal to mod a okay so uh, this is how uh, we are representing roc for z transform uh, we are also as as we used to do for laplace transform we can characterize z transform completely using its poles and zeros Okay, so we saw that the previous function, it had a pole at A. That is why we considered A as a significant point and then located ROC accordingly. Okay, it had a 0 at Z is equal to 0 and 1 pole at Z is equal to A. Fine. So, this is going to be the pole 0 plot. We are representing 0 with this dot and pole with a cross. Okay, same, same convention we are using here also. Okay, fine. So this is this is the case when uh, a was less than one, and this is the case when a was greater than one. Okay, both the cases we have represented. Now suppose you consider one more sequence. We are considering another sequence x n, which is equal to minus a to the power n u minus n minus one. If I try to find out uh, its z transform x of z, again it is going to be summation from minus infinity to infinity minus a to the power n u of minus n minus 1 z to the power minus n now if you look at these limits see this is multiplication with u of minus n minus 1 which means that this this uh, signal is going to exist only from minus infinity to 0 minus infinity to 0 and this is going to be a z minus 1 to the power n now for this see this is also a gp but this is a decrease in gp each time we are going to divide with this factor now for this this uh, sequence to converge for the sequence to be convergent what do we need we need that the common factor must be less than one okay this common factor should be greater than one. i'm sorry only if this common factor is greater than when if you keep on dividing with this factor only then you are going to obtain a convergent series so in this case we need this factor should be greater than one or equivalently i can write that mod z should be less than mod a okay mod z should be less than mod a and what is going to be the laplace oh sorry z transform in that case minus sign already we are having one upon one okay so uh, the formula that we are having for gp is first term first term a upon one minus r r for this term is going to be a z inverse to the power minus one if you just solve this, you take the LCM, solve this and everything when you do, you are going to obtain the same expression that is z upon z minus a. 
with the ROCL mod Z less than minus A. Now similar to Laplace transform you can see that left handed signal as well as right handed signal has the same expression for Z transform. The only difference is in ROC for these systems also. Okay, only uh, only ROC differs, right? When uh, we are having different ROC, we are having we can we we are having different ROC for different signals, right? So on the basis of signal, on the basis of ROC, different signals may have same expressions for Z transform. Okay, so without ROC, we cannot define Z transform. We cannot talk about Z transform without defining the ROC for Z transform. Okay, otherwise it is going to be an incomplete definition because two different sequences may have identical uh, Z transform except for the ROCs, right? So now again, we're going to look at some properties of ROC properties of ROC for the Z transform. So most of the properties are going to be same as we've already seen in Laplace transform. Uh, one or two properties may differ. We're going to see all of them again although. Right. So first property is going to be ROC does not contain any poles. ROC is not going to contain any poles similar to Laplace transform. Second property that we see is if x of n is a finite sequence, finite sequence means it does not continue till infinity. That is, if x of n is 0 except in, except in a finite interval from n1 to n2. Okay. Where n1 and n2 are some finite numbers. Right? Then x of z converges for converges for some value of z and ROC is going to be the entire z plane and ROC is going to be entire z plane except except for z is equal to 0 or and z is equal to infinity. Right, so we have seen this similar property in Laplace domain also that if a signal is a finite duration signal then its ROC is going to be the entire S plane. If the signal is a, is a two sided signal, two sided signal or infinite signal then the ROC is going to be a, a vertical strip. Okay, same properties follow here, same. Right, so similarly if Xn is a right sided sequence right sided sequence what does a right sided sequence mean xn is 0 for n less than n1 less than infinity okay for some particular value n1 if if for all values of n less than that n1 the signal is 0 that is xn is a right handed sequence then we say that xz is going to convert some for, uh, for some value of z and roc is of the form roc is of the form mod z greater than r max okay or or this is going to be less than infinity greater than r max what is r max here r max is the largest magnitude of any poles of xz so what are we trying to say is roc is exterior of the circle exterior of the circle mod z is equal to r max in the z plane with the possible exception of z is equal to infinity z is equal to infinity or z is equal to zero are not going to be included in most of the cases right but uh, what what are we trying to say is that uh, this roc is going to lie outside some uh, outside the maximum magnitude of the pole right similarly if xn is a if xn is a left sided sequence left sided sequence that is x of n is 0 for x of n is 0 for n greater than n2 greater than minus infinity right that is it is lying only to the left of some particular value to the right of that value it is 0 
then what do we say and sim and same x converges for some values in then roc is of the form roc is of the form mod z less than r minimum or or it is going to be greater than 0 but less than minimum r minimum what is this r minimum r minimum is the smallest magnitude smallest magnitude of any of the poles of xz any of the poles of xz that is what are we trying to say is roc is the interior of the circle interior of the circle mod z is equal to r minimum in the z plane with possible exception of exception of z is equal to 0 okay we are not going to include these two points we already seen this okay so for a left sided signal we are going to have a roc which lies interior of the circle mod z is equal to r minimum and for a right sided signal we are going to have roc which lies exterior of the circle mod z is equal to maximum uh, uh, r max which is maximum part of the pole okay if x of n is a two sided signal if x of n is a two sided sequence what is a two sided sequence that is x of n is an infinite duration sequence infinite duration sequence that is neither right sided nor left sided okay it occurs for both both the values continues till continues from minus infinity till plus infinity okay and x z converges for some values in then roc is going to be the form roc is of form mod z greater than r1 and less than r2 okay r1 and r2 are the magnitude of two poles of x z that is roc is going to be an annular ring roc is an annular ring in the z plane annular ring in the z plane between the circles between the circle mod z is equal to r1 and mod z is equal to r2 and does not contain any pole so this is similar to laplace transform uh, only when we are having a two sided sequence two sided signal we said that its ROC is going to be a vertical strip in S plane which does not contain any poles. Similarly, in Z transform, ROC is going to be an annular ring. Annular ring means bounded by these two circles. Okay. So, the, these are all properties of uh, ROC for Z transform which closely follow properties of Laplace transform. We already seen all these properties. Right. So, uh, let us look at some examples now for these properties using these properties so suppose we given suppose you given a finite sequence x of n which is defined as follows it is not zero for a particular particular values of n and is zero otherwise zero otherwise okay which means that it is a finite valued finite uh, duration sequence right and uh, obviously n when n2 are some finite numbers so you have to prove that prove that roc of x of z is entire s plane entire z plane sorry entire z plane maybe except maybe except for z is equal to 0 or z is equal to infinity so you have to prove that uh, for a finite valued sequence roc is going to be the entire z plane now if you look at the definition of z transform you know that this is going to be from summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity but since this sequence is defined only for values of n from n1 to n2 we are going to have this x n z minus n now for z not equal to 0 or infinity each term in this equation will be finite right this is see this is just a simple gp right for we, if you just keep on putting different values of n here starting from n1 suppose xn1 z minus n1 
then you have some other value n1 plus 1 right z minus n1 plus 1 and so on until x n2 z minus n2 now if these if z does not have powers minus in, uh, infinity or minus 0 right then this this each of these term are going to be defined and we say that x of z will converge that it will result in a finite value only now if n1 is less than 0 if this n1 is less than 0 and n2 is greater than 0 then then this this equation this equation will include terms with both positive powers of z and negative powers of z now as mod z tends to 0 right terms with negative powers of z become unbounded and as mod z tends to infinity terms with positive powers of z become unbounded therefore roc is the entire z plane except for z is equal to 0 and z is equal to infinity right what are we trying to say is if this n1 is less than 0 what do we say then all the terms with negative powers become unbounded if this n2 is greater than 0 then positive terms become unbounded therefore roc roc means possible values of z have to include negative values of z also and positive values of z also therefore roc for this signal is going to be entire z plane entire z plane except except for okay we are not very sure but possibly except for z is equal to infinity and z is equal to zero right so uh, this is uh, going to be the roc for this signal now we are going to look at another example suppose you given a finite sequence x of n which is defined something like this 5 comma 3 comma minus 2 0 4 minus 3 this is where the sequence starts. Now you are required to find x of z and its ROC. So we start, okay, let's write the question completely. Find x of z and its ROC. This is what the given question is. Now you know how you are defining x of z. x of z is summation from minus infinity to infinity x of n z of minus n. Now look at the values of n for which the signal is defined it is defined for n is equal to minus 2 to n is equal to 3 so you can just change the limit and make it x of n z of minus n now what is it going what is this going to be you can just expand this x of minus 2 z minus 2 plus x of minus 1 then minus 1 plus x of 0 z uh, to the power 0 is going to be 1 only so i am not writing it x of 1 z 1 x of 2 uh, okay so you, you're putting minus 2 here so this is going to become plus 2 this is going to become plus 1 this is going to be minus 2 x of 2 z minus 2 plus x of 3 z minus 3 okay now you just put the values x of minus 2 is 5 so this is going to be 5 z square plus 3 z minus 2 plus 4z minus 2 minus 3z minus 3. Now, see, if you just look at this, look at this expansion for x of z. If z is not equal to 0 or infinity, each term in x of z will be finite. And consequently, this z transform x of z will converge, will have a finite value. So, now also see that x of z includes both positive powers of z and negative powers of z right so uh, the problem that we just solved we can conclude that roc for this signal roc is going to be entire z plane entire z plane not including zero and infinity see since this given sequence x of n was a finite duration signal see a sequence ROC for this uh, ROC for its Z transform is, is going to be entire Z plane. Okay. Uh, look at the next question now. Suppose you are given a sequence X of N defined as A to the power N for N lying between 0 and N minus 1 and 0 otherwise. Okay, suppose x of n is defined something like this, a is greater than 0. Now you are required to find 
xz transform and plot uh, plot the poles and zeros of xz find x z z and plot poles and zeros right so uh, we start with the basic definition for finding z transform which is going to be summation n is equal to c since the signal is defined for n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 you redefine the limits from 0 to n minus 1 for 0 to n minus 1 your signal is a to the power n multiplication with z minus n so this is going to be summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 this can be written as a z minus 1 to the power n now if you see this is actually a finite gp with finite terms okay so i'm using the formula for summing a gp which is 1 minus first term to the power total number of term total number of terms in this gp is going to be capital n upon 1 minus common ratio if you just solve this simplify this you're going to obtain some expression of this kind you can just verify right now from this equation we can see that there is a pole of n minus 1th order at z is equal to 0 right there is this this is going to be a pole of n minus 1th order at z is equal to 0 and a pole at z is equal to a right now since x of n was a finite sequence finite sequence means having finite terms only and is 0 for n less than 0 which means this is a right handed signal so the roc is going to be roc is going to be mod z greater than 0 see this x of z had two poles one occurring at z is equal to a a was a positive number okay and one occurred at z is equal to 0 now since this is a right handed sequence and a finite duration sequence then my roc is going to be mod z greater than 0 okay now the n roots of the numerator polynomial now we need to find out uh, the zeros also so n roots of the numerator polynomial are at see these are going to be the zeros for this equation a e j 2 pi k by n see uh, this is going to have n complex roots this is how you're going to define those roots this k is going to range from 0 1 until n minus 1 so now the root at k is equal to 0 is going to cancel the pole at z is equal to a when you put k is equal to 0 this is going to be a 0 lying at uh, a lying at a and we also have a pole at a so these two are going to cancel out so remaining zeros are going to be after the pole zero cancellation occurs remaining zeros are going to be this k is equal to zero is going to vanish so you are going to have ultimately you are going to have n minus one zeros if you try to sketch the pole zero plot for this function This is imaginary part of z. This is real part of z. Here pole 0 cancellation occurred. This is actually mod z is equal to 0 circle. Pole 0 cancellation occurred here. Here we are having n minus 1th order pole. n minus 1th order pole occurring at 0. And here we are having all the other zeros. Something like this. 